especially I've seen the two of you do that. You have such a great rapport with your people. They love you and you very genuinely love them and they know it. That is such a sweet thing to see. So it doesn't surprise me at all. That was one of your core values in this pandemic. Amy, I know that you work with a lot of the gals within the ministry. How did you intentionally take care of those gals? You know, I think I've always felt like it was impossible (laughs) to do some of the things that I usually do, like lead Bible study and disciple women, not face to face. We didn't have any other option. And I was really blown away by what God did. I think supernaturally through those Bible study online with a group of 10 or 12 women and one-on-one meetings, he bridged something and his spirit moved really freely, but it took believing that he could do that and stepping into it. And then the other thing is I got together a group of about seven women who were a good cross section of our whole team from different countries and different parts of the ministry who I know have a deep walk with Christ and are prayerfully seeking him. And we all started to pray together and just ask the Lord, what does he want next for all of our women? And we interviewed a cross section of our women and asked the question, if your leadership could know anything about your needs in your context of ministry, what would that be? And we got just a wealth of information that now we are processing and asking the Lord to show us how do we meet the needs of our team and our women. And we're really excited about what God's doing. I feel like he's giving us a whole new vision for how to care for them. So Mm. this space that God has given us, like it's, it's like coronavirus has given us all permission to slow down, pause, and really listen to the Lord. And he's giving us fresh vision and fresh ideas to move forward. I don't want to miss that. I want to make the most of that and really position and posture myself to not just do, but to listen really closely Mm -hmm. to him. And I I think that's bearing much fruit Mm -hmm. and really excited to see what that does. Very eternal fruit. Is there anybody or any country that you've said they were going just fine, I thought everything was perfect, that new problems that you were not expecting to emerge because of the crisis this year? And are there other countries that you felt like you were struggling with all the time, but suddenly God snapped something into gear there that you were not expecting them to respond as well as they did, and God's doing a new work? I think more of what I'm seeing is individuals that are stepping into things that I might not have expected to step into. So we have a group of people that just said, hey, we're going to start doing a Bible study and see what happens at this college. And it was like four or five people right at the beginning of COVID. By the time that they maxed out, it was like 70 or 80 college students awesome. that were coming for this Bible study. Mm-hmm. I think one of the other big things, Bram, this one's on me that I'm learning. We as a leadership just really see a need for more staff development. You know, our organization's 25 years old. That's not that old. We're in some growing pains. And one of them is it's time to really start going from mom and pop to a little bit more corporate, which I don't like to do because it takes, you know, kind of messes with the family feeling. But we're really laying out paths. And we can see that from what's happened with COVID. Everybody that's coming to Josiah Venture has come into a different Josiah Venture. You know, it's not always the same, you know, and now we're starting to standardize stuff. So that's been a big one. And this isn't just due to COVID, but in a country like Bulgaria, we had some really strong cross-cultural mm-hmm. North American missionary families that for health reasons, family yeah, reasons, yeah. kids got called back to the state. Mm-hmm. And it felt like a huge hit to that team because they were key families. At our last staff training, we had a whole little army of national Bulgarians who stepped up and they're coming through and we're seeing that lots is really clearing the path for new growth. I am excited about what God's doing in Bulgaria. Like these are dynamic Christ followers that God is raising up and they're being involved. So we're excited to see what he does through that too. Now about relationships back in the States, because you've been a missions agency that is primarily funded through donors who are keeping your missionaries on the field, a very traditional model for missionary support through churches and through individuals that pledge over a period of time to keep them in the field for his work. How has that been affected in the past few months? Uh, Great question. You know, it hasn't moved that much. I think the time that we need to look is next year. There's a lag to it. Right. The things that we're telling our staff is make sure that the support team 
They understand the vision and the mission, and they understand that they are co-partners, co-laborers to equip young leaders to fulfill Christ's commission through the local church is our mission. It's what we're there to do. Yeah. And these aren't just supporters. They are co-laborers yeah. in the mission to the reciprocal relationship with our teammates who live in the state. Mm. I do want to say that national missionaries and U.S., Canada, and U.K., they are special supporters and co-laborers because mm. they don't budge too much. When it hit hard in 2008, it kept rising. It's a big praise to the Lord yeah. for how they are. I do think we're all facing the reality that 2020 politics, economics, health, safety, security, all the issues that could move the needle, positive or negative, for an entire society, their pressure's on us like they've never been before. Yeah. Obviously, we're all praying about that because we as a communications ministry are just as sensitive to people's faith and belief in us, especially at times when it's not easy to be supporting something that's not just putting your food on the table. And yet we're looking at the long game with you and saying, what is the 21st century really going to mean in a Great Commission? What will history show of the church and their work and their willingness to stand with each other across all of these great divides and see God do things that mm -hmm. only he could do across such great distances? And I don't just mean distances of space, but distances of perspective and time, even of hope. You wonder if anyone's even praying for you across all that busyness and craziness in the world. And you don't have time to catch up and really mm -hmm. focus on relationships because you've got all those front burner frying pan issues like you did that first couple of months running around like chickens with your head cut off. Mm -hmm. And God then said, no, Sabbath, or you're all going to go stir crazy. We are going through that, yep. that first troubled sleep. You know, we're waking up at the end of that first day, we might say, of this trial. And the entire worldwide church is with us in this, but we don't sense it yet. Speak to us based on the relationships and the people you're talking to. Both people are being reached with the gospel in these countries because of your work. And those who are learning to live the gospel in their own lives because they're partners with you. And they're learning to live it in ways they never thought they would go that deep, that fast. Tell me what the church here in America needs to know and be reminded about what God is doing in and through young people right now in that part of the world? I think that there is more than ever. I mean, we've lived here for 22 years and more than ever, we're seeing a real sensitivity to spiritual things. Mm -hmm. Students are very open to talk about God, to talk about the gospel, to hear about Jesus. Our thing is we just got to get in front of them. We need to be able to to share the good news. When we first came, we always said it was really hard soil. Like we had one kid with the whole summer of camps, one kid come to Christ and we were elated. Mm -hmm. And now you're just seeing kids giving their lives to Jesus and they want to serve him. So talking to the church in the States, I think the one thing that's needed is for people to believe that God's at work in Central and Eastern Europe. Amen. And he has not forgotten these young people mm -hmm. and that he has a plan of pointing all of those countries right back to his son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We are not the ones doing it. We're kind of on the wave of what he's doing yeah. and we're swimming hard. Yeah. Like we're ready to go. I think the time is now keeps going through my head and in times of want and in times of drought and then the knee jerk reaction is to pull back and to forward and to make sure I've got mm -hmm. that pile of manna in the corner yep. of my tent that I can, you know, put my faith in. And Mel and I learned years ago that when we hoard and we hold on to, it just goes rotten. And if we become this cesspool of collecting God's resources and God called us years ago. We were always in want and we were always struggling financially when we held on to everything that we had. And he began to speak to us about sowing generously so that we could reap generously and being conduits that he could pour out his resources through, conduits that weren't just like a small straw, but were big, heavy channels yeah. of his goodness with our very lives, living generously and giving generously, not holding on. And that when we do that, we not only see the benefit in our lives, but we see really amazing things happen. I think in this season, one of the things that the church all throughout the world needs to do is not hunker down and protect, but rather open up and be generous. And that's what God's calling us to, too. It'd be really easy to say, we don't know what next year is going to look like, so we better start saving and holding some stuff back. But I think God's calling us to continue to trust him and live and give generously. Mm. And that's what we want to be as the church and his body. 
you know, that there's actually a real honest dependence on him. Yeah. I think that so many times where we talk a good talk, depending on God, but actually we're depending on, you know. The resources we can see. Yeah. Instead of going, nope, this is all the Lord. I'm going to support the church. I'm going to support these missionaries. I'm going to give to the poor. I'm going to, like all these things, he said he'll supply all our needs. Are we going to live that way? And so we believe it. Like we get asked all the time, you know, are you guys afraid that the economy is just going to totally wipe you guys out? And I'm like, uh, no, this is the Lord's ministry. He can do what he wants. And this is stuff that he wants to do. I love how passionate you are about the work that God is doing. And I can see that it's not just the work that he's doing through you mm-hmm. to the people that you are in contact with, but it's so evident that he's doing it in you. Also, like you said, Mel, it's so easy for us to say these things that we believe this, we believe that about God or, you know, yeah, Jesus is the answer. And we we have all of these great bumper sticker quotes that we often use. But it's so neat hearing you say, these are things that God has done a deep work in my heart about. We see it in the ministry. You're pouring into these women and to these families and the young men. But that deep time with the Lord, it seems to be a natural outflow of your life. Because I know we've had conversations in the past about how difficult that was, how has God released you to have that flow out of you that way? It happens over and over again. It's never a finished work, for sure. But most recently, at the beginning of the whole pandemic, I've been in First and Second Kings this whole time, and I was reading about Elisha and the widow. Her taxes were going to be collected, and she was going to possibly lose her sons, and she went to Elisha and asked him to help her, and she expected that he was going to answer that prayer a certain way. But instead, he told her to go collect as many jars as she could from her neighbors, and then shut herself in with the Lord. And there was a transaction of faith that happened between her and the Lord in that shut in place. And she watched God answer her prayer in a very unexpected way by letting him fill the jars with what he wanted and how he wanted and answer her prayer his way. And I think one of the things Mel and I have been experiencing in this season is we have an idea of how we want God to answer our prayers Mm -hmm. and supply. And he often does it in such an unexpectedly better way. And we need to be ready and have collected as many jars as we can, (laughs) set ourselves in and make that transaction of faith with him. You can tell me if I'm going too long, but I'm super excited about this because this is the most recent thing I've learned. Our daughter got married in the States. We didn't think we were going to be able to go, but God suddenly opened the door for us to be with her. But our son and his wife didn't have their visas and couldn't come. For us, it was a heartache because our family is very, very close. And God spoke to me one morning right before we flew and said, Amy, this is about my long-term good plan for your son and his wife and for Montenegro where they are serving. It's not about your short-lived plans. It's about my long-term good. And can I trust him that he is working out his long-term good, not just for my kids, but for the whole country of Montenegro. I surrendered my plans. And trusted him. We got to the States and Noah and Joe wrote us that they were doing Bible studies with two young people who were significant. One kid whose dad is an ambassador for Montenegro. And these kids put their faith in Christ last week. Mm. And if our kids had come to the wedding, the kids wouldn't have had all that time with them studying God's word and come to light as the spirit opened their eyes. So many times I think my short list plans are so important that I need to trust in God's long-term good and make that transaction of faith in those quiet places with Him and let Him fill my jars and provide in those He wants to, not the way I want Him to. Mm. So that's a long answer to your question, but yeah, we keep learning and growing and going deeper and we still have a long way to go in our faith. We're proud to have been witness to the incredible people that God keeps bringing your way. You know, when people become magnets, you find out what their character is by what they attract. And we see plenty of bad attractors out there in the world. But there's been so much about the quality of the people that God called together in that first nucleus that created the gravity that drew others into it. We just want to acknowledge that again, the quality of the people we've seen, not just because of their capacities or their training or their skills, which would be the first place you would take note of what they can do, but the quality of who they are and who they believe Christ to be. 
and then stake their yeah. flag in the ground and say, this is the God I'm serving. That's been unassailable with the people we've met throughout Desire Adventure in all those countries we've got to travel to. And during that month of December into January, we cruised through nine of your countries where you have people doing work. And we crammed a lot of interviews into that amount of time. Over the weeks and months to come, we'll be kind of parceling those gems out one at a time so people can get an idea again of what God has been about doing even before Corona hit, what God's been up to in all these countries and will continue to. He's not giving up on your people. He's not giving up on the kids they're reaching. Yeah. He's not giving up on the countries of Europe. He's got a plan. I want to continue being part of that plan by helping the story to reach more ears and eyes. So thank you for letting us in a little bit on that. What's the closing word? Your bumper sticker that you would probably stick on your vehicle and say, this is what I'm about. This is what Josiah Ventures does. This is what we're believing for the future. What is it you want us to hear just to close off our time together? We pray every day for a movement of God among the youth of Central and Eastern Europe that finds its home in the local church and that it will transform society. That these young people will love the Lord, love his word, and be in the church and from that place, the entire country has changed. Yeah. I believe in my life, and I'm going to see it happen. And that can't be too much longer. <laughs> so. It is helpful to mention that one of the reasons we haven't talked much in the past few months is because during your time of lockdown, when you were going stir crazy, you finally said, I just got to go do some exercise. And that kind of met a bad end. <laughs> so I got to ask, oh, after you ran over the neighbor's dog in your scooter, and after you got your collarbone smashed on the pavement, how have you been healing up? Oh, I'm, I'm healed up well. That, that was a crazy time. It was like a double whammy with COVID. Mm -hmm. And then with that, Amy kept saying, I think the Lord is just wanting you to be quiet and listen. And, <laughs> and I agree. That was actually a really precious time. So, yeah. And you had to learn how to type with two fingers again. Yeah. No, Amy just typed for me. <laughs> Learn how to serve my husband yeah. again. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we'll find all kinds of new ways to serve each other in the years to come, I'm sure. May God bring us around the table of peace again so we can touch base and touch each other yeah. literally in a way that says the worlds have reconnected. I'm looking forward to that time. And I want our Compassion Radio listeners to say a prayer right now for all those missionaries throughout Eastern Europe that are reaching people that are being forgotten politically. They're not in the news anymore. They're under the radar in so many ways, yet we have many, many people from here and around the world that have combined for a unified effort to reach that region of the world, which is full of hundreds of millions of people yeah. for the purpose of building the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And pray for Josiah Venture. Pray for Mel and Amy Ellenwood and their teams and your base there in Eastern Czech Republic. We miss you so much, and we look forward to the time we can actually be together with you across that table. Hey.